Okay, we're here with Pete Smith of Songkick. Tell us a little bit more. I love what you guys are doing. So Songkick is a place for you to find about out about your your next concert and to reminisce and uh, kind of claim uh, your last concert as well. So we have a live music archive where you can nominate all the concerts that you've been to and share photos and participate in um, sharing the community, uploading their rich media and information and set lists. But uh, we also have uh, a ton of tools for you to find out your out about your next concert um, and sync your last FM library. Tell us what you have in your iTunes so we'll email you and tweet you and, and, and Facebook message you whenever those bands are in town and whenever your friends are going to bands so you can jump on board and go with them and find tickets. So that's Songkick, the home of live music online. Uh, so in terms of preferences, it sounds like you can set up specific preferences so that if you want to be alerted by Twitter and nothing else you can do, alerted by email and nothing else you can do, is that how yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. And you can also have no preference. You can have no not notifications and, and use Songkick um, as, its, as, its, as its own kind of social network. But we figured we wouldn't, we wouldn't invent, reinvent the wheel. And we'd, we'd allow you to extract the information that you wanted and uh, distribute that out there. Do you need me to be, to be slightly A little lower? bit, yeah. So, um, I love this concept a lot. I've been a Pandora user for a long time, you know, and, and I'm curious. I mean, obviously, this is specific around concerts, mm -hmm. but is the idea of preferences similar, where it starts to learn about music that I like? So, maybe, you know, I love Joe Jackson. I want to know every time he's in town anywhere in the world because I travel a lot. What about music like? Joe Jackson that I can learn about. Yeah, so we have that. And I think one of the things that sets us apart is we also are building up uh, a lot more about your live music profile. So the barrier to going to see a concert is a lot higher than the barrier to listening to a track. So we need to make better recommendations when it comes to saying, hey, we, we don't know this band, but you should go and spend $25 on a ticket and spend an entire evening going to see this band because we really think you're going to like it. Mm -hmm. So we have to use, uh, we can use your, your past concert history, um, but we can also have, a, we also use our own recommendation tools. So, um, and again, recommending live music is difficult because especially small bands won't be recording music and they won't have, you won't have them in their, in your MP3 collection. So we trawl blogs and we mine those blogs and Wikipedia for textual, contextual references to bands in, for example, the same paragraph. So uh, they may be like, oh, these guys are the new Radiohead and, that, and then we can recommend that band to a Radiohead band. And, say, and what about the percentage, uh, the percentage of indie bands versus well-known artists? How is that divided in your system? And are you looking to promote more indie artists who can't get out there in a alternative way? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that... Uh, I think it's skewed towards ticketed concerts right now because of the sources of our listings. But in time, we're hoping to drive right down into the tiniest concerts because that's really where there's a, there's a lot of excitement in the live music industry. And that's where small bands have to concentrate everything they've got in their early years because they're only making money off touring and t-shirts and merchandise. So, uh, and tell me a little bit about the demographics worldwide. You're currently in the UK only? We're in the UK, the US, um, and the rest of the English-speaking world. UK and I'm talking to the Bass Kit team. So, who am I meeting with here? I mean, it's Juan. Juan. Can't hear you. Juan. Juan. Okay. My name is Richard Best. Okay. And I'm Simon Best. Great. So, tell me a little bit more about Bass Kit. You said that now that this is for um, a website builder but not targeted to the consumer market, it's actually targeted to. Web designers. Yes, it's targeted at the web designers to use, but we've also taken on board the consumers or not consumers, business people who, who have their websites made and want to get involved in the process as well. So we've made the, the actual editing process as simple as possible so everyone can work together and collaborate to make sites quicker than before. Okay, and in terms of the, um, the platform, right, and actually if one of you is more appropriate to answer this question than another, just raise your hand. In terms of the platform, does this also plug in to blog platforms like WordPress and TypePad? Simon's probably the one to answer. Okay. It is a standalone platform at the moment, so 
um, you can build a blog into your website, you can build news feeds and articles, so it really does cover the full spectrum, so it doesn't actually plug into anything else in the brain. But what it does do, it can pull other feeds into it, so if you've got a Twitter feed, or if you've got some blog posts you want to pull in to display on one of your basic sites, you can do that. Who do you mostly compete with today? Who wants to take that question? Um, I'll, I'll take that question. I mean, there, there are a, a couple of products that are closest competitors, competitors to us, a Squarespace, sure. um, which is a slightly more dynamic web builder as well. There's something called Light CMS, which is fairly similar in some of the things that it does. I don't know if you've seen a product called Business Catalyst, yeah. which is Good Barry's sort of web professional brand. Um, but what we found is that the product, that the market's very crowded in the pro-consumer end of the market, right. and it's very, very crowded in the sort of web developer end of the market. With lots of CMS uh, products up there, but actually the middle of the market, which mainly would serve SMEs with one to nine employees, which is 95% of all SMEs. So if you take the US and Europe, we're talking about 40 to 45 million small businesses. Um, they're not really served by either ends of that market. Um, the pro-consumer tools don't really do enough for some of these businesses, and the other tools are a lot more too too complex to be used by these businesses in the middle. So that's the market that we're really trying to address. And you're based in the UK. Are you finding that most of your um, most of your audience today are UK-based designers? Are you trying to go worldwide with this? We've had we've had interest worldwide um, through Seedcamp. Um, we're launching in the UK. Um, but we're also launching in four other languages, so French, German, Spanish and Italian. Um, and yeah, our main focus will initially be to roll out in the UK because we're based in the UK, but over the next three years we hope to roll out across Europe and the US. Super. And, and what about in terms of funding, business model, right? How, do, how, are, how are you structuring that? Is there going to be sort of a light version and a pro version? I think, I think at the moment we want is we are really replacing the hosting companies. So if you are today paying £10 per month for a hosting company, we want those guys to pay £10 per month for Basecamp. So if you think that in Europe there are 25 million uh, companies, you get 1 million of them paying £10 a month, we've got a £100 million uh, business. It would be fantastic. And your VCs would be happy with that. Uh, VCs, exactly. we've got, we've got, uh, we've got already seen investment from two VCs in the uh, UK. Actually, Nesta is one of our VCs, and we are now talking to a few of them to come into the expanded seed round. So I think we'll get the funding. It's a good business, very scalable, and I think it's, it might look like a crowded space, but actually, no one is doing that to web designers. And guess what? All the small businesses go to web designers to make a website. So it seems nonsense that not technology is approaching web designers to do this rollout of businesses for you know, websites for small businesses. So we think that we've got a new approach to the market. We have developed the technology that way. And these guys, when they started with the company, they were web designers. They were really frustrated with the way web uh, sites were built. So actually, I think we've got, a, you know, we've got really good, a good chance to make it work. I think. Yeah, I'm not happy with the current status quo either. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have. Okay.